This is the Pershing 140 and it's one of the most, if not the most incredible yacht that I've ever set foot aboard. The numbers are just staggering. It's all aluminium, it's 142 feet long, it's 28 feet wide, it has a displacement of 250 tonnes and a fuel capacity of 30,000 litres. It has four 2,600 horsepower MTU diesel engines connected to water jets for a top speed of 38 knots and a cruising speed of 35 knots. If you drop it down to 10 knots, the cruising range is 1,400 nautical miles. I cannot wait to show you around. Now I had to point out that beneath this area is the beach club and we'll have a proper look at that from inside later on. But up here you've got this sort of raised cockpit area, nice big sun pad back here, obviously freestanding furniture, you're free to do what you want really with that space. And interestingly what they've done is the dinette table is actually sunk down, you've got a run of three steps here. The reason they've done that is so that it's more private, so that if you're having a private dinner you haven't got prying eyes from the quayside looking at you while you eat. But because you have these open wings either side and you have the glass balconies you still have a great connection and wonderful views over the water. And then you're into this amazing main saloon area. The space in here is incredible, obviously, and it's a flexible space as well. If you have a particular interior designer or furniture maker that you like, then Pershing will liaise with them and create pretty much whatever space you want in here using whatever furniture, colour, materials you want. What I particularly like about this boat is that you have this lovely feature here which is leftover shards of creation of the aluminium hull backlit and mounted here as a real centrepiece inside the saloon. I think that works really nicely. If you go down to port that way you have the captain's cabin, he has his own bathroom, storage, desk, things like that and access directly to the bridge as well. But if we carry on down the starboard side, you actually have a side door here out onto the side deck, you arrive at the master suite and wow what a space this is. You have this sort of study lounging area here. Again, you can do whatever you want with this area. This particular owner's got this sort of lounging space, television and a desk, but you could have a bigger desk if you wanted or more storage, however you want to lay it out. And then through a sliding door here, you're into the main cabin here, forward on the main deck. And what an amazing space it is. You get the effect of those sort of shark's gill windows on either side. So you have great views out natural light in here as well and just look at the sheer size of it, the floor space, the headroom, the size of the bed, the size of the furniture, it's all so beautifully done and beautifully put together and down this run of stairs you have a huge walk-in wardrobe and a really spectacular bathroom as well. So come out the master cabin, there's another staircase just here and this leads down to the guest accommodation. Where you find four guest cabins. Now every cabin has got its own bathroom, you've got two twins to port, one forward, one aft and then next to the aft twin you've got a really good sized double again with its own bathroom. But the best cabin on this deck is the VIP, forward here towards the bow, really lovely bathroom on the way in, you've got twin sinks, you've got a separate toilet and shower cubicle and again the space is absolutely lovely. I think your guests are going to be very very happy in here and the headroom is tremendous, totally flat floor, loads of storage and it's really really stylish as well and every single cabin has got its own iPad where guests can control the lighting, the AV, the air conditioning, they can make it totally bespoke for their cabin. Each cabin has got one of these so they have complete control. They also have the phone system inside the boat as well. So we head aft again back towards the saloon. We come past the dining table, head towards the captain's cabin. And this is where you have access internally to the bridge. You can get to it from the flybridge or the sun deck as well, but you can get to it here. Obviously that's crucial for the captain, he's close to the bridge. He can also use this sliding door to cut himself off from guests so it's a bit more private. You also have a side door here so there's direct access out to the decks but now we'll have a proper look at that bridge. And what a space 
this is. I mean, just look at those screens. The way that the information is presented on this boat is just stunning. You've got full management control screens flush here on the dash, and you've got these fantastic upright screens that you can control completely. You can have engine information, obviously the camera, radar, navigation. It almost feels like commercial spec on here. And then there's that view forward over that amazing bow. And you can cover all of this over as well. So you can pull screens forward here to cover these up. You can see they're in place here. Over on this side, I can pull these over so that you can cover up all the electronics, protects them from sunlight, and also just makes the whole area look a lot cleaner if you're not using it when you're at sea. And as I mentioned, from here, you have direct access up a run of stairs to the sun deck and the flybridge helm. Now unfortunately we can't sea trial the 140 but if we could this is where I'd want to be driving the boat from. I can only imagine what it would feel like to be up here looking over that foredeck charging along at nearly 40 knots with 10,000 over 10,000 horsepower charging away beneath you. But this is a great sort of pared down version of what you've got downstairs. It's really focused, you've got just what you need, you've got a couple of screens, then you see the four rev counters reminding you that you've got four 2,600 horsepower MTU diesels down in that engine room. And this boat uses jet drives and all of that is controlled through this little joystick here. So when you're manoeuvring slow speed, you're using this little stick. You also have a bow thruster which is controlled by this, but this is what you're going to use to manoeuvre all 142 feet of this thing when you're coming into a marina, no doubt with half of the quayside watching you. Then you've got these tiny little throttles here, this is how you feed in the power once you're out to sea, and you've got the levels here for trim and the bucket angle, all of that you can do that manually but there's also an auto system now so the buckets trim automatically depending on sea state, sea state and speed. You've also got Humphreys interceptors which are doing the same thing as well. As for the rest of the sun deck, well, it's absolutely enormous as you'd imagine and it's protected by this really substantial aluminium fixed hardtop. Here in the centre you've got this low slung seating, again this is very flexible, you could do what you want with this area really. This side you've got a really substantial bar slash galley area with sinks, fridges, grills, everything you'd expect and I love that you can sort of line everything up in front of these bar stalls here. It feels really classy like a sort of top end hotel. Aft they've just gone for a massive great sun pad, again that's pretty flexible but that seems a pretty good solution. It's not underneath the hard top so it's well exposed to the sun, a great place to relax when the weather's good. You have a run of steps aft from the sun deck as well so you can get down to the cockpit really easily and what we'll do now is we'll head back down onto the boat and we'll head to the foredeck. We'll move forward under these wonderful covered side decks. The space here is just amazing and you slowly sort of rise up as you move forward. There's a little run of steps here, there's a boarding gate here as well, there's another one on the other side and this is the outside access door into that section by the master cabin so you can get straight in off the side deck into the master cabin there. Up this little run of steps we're really at the party zone. It's all opened up at the moment you have a huge sun pad, then you have this wonderful sunken area here where you've got a dining table that flips out, there's lighting down here, you've got the stereo system as well and of course the hot tub. And as you can see the hatch is lifted now but that gives you access to the anchors, ground tackle and all the stuff you need for mooring there at the bow. But that closes right down and then a lid comes across this entire area so when the boat's at sea this is just one big flat panel. Now I think I've saved the best till last, the engine room, but before we do that let's have a quick look at the crew space and there's quite a nice touch here. Obviously the crew have got direct access from deck but they also need access from inside obviously because that's where the galley is. So quite a nice touch is this door, this internal door is actually controlled with a little foot plate. You hit that with your foot and if they're carrying plates and glasses they can go through like that and now I'm into the saloon and there's another kick plate down here as well so they can do it on the way back in. And down here though is the crew space.
Now there's sleeping space for six crew aboard this boat. Four of those spaces are down here in bunks, just over this way. This is obviously the galley, you've got twin sinks, you've got Miele cooking, induction hob, oven, you've got extraction by Vortex and a Tapanaki grill as well, plus of course domestic size fridge freezers opposite. If we work our way around, you come to the sort of crew living space where you've got a twin dinette, bit of storage, television, of course, down here they have controls for all the boat systems as well, so they can check them remotely. And then you have the actual sleeping space and washer and dryer just over this way. Right then, here we go. The beating hearts of the Pershing 140. Now, if you're gonna put four huge engines into an engine room, you need to get the installation right and it is exemplary aboard the Pershing 140 and here they are those four MTU 2600 horsepower diesel 16 cylinders 35.7 litres apiece they are true monsters but they all have their space in this engine room they're easy to get to they're easy to move around on they're easy to work on it's beautifully lit in here you obviously have good access to the jet drives as well there are four jet drives four engines with a drive each. And then you have the fuel tanks on this thing, 30,000 liters. They're all interchangeable. There's a really sophisticated fuel switching system. It also polishes the fuel as it goes from the bunker tanks into the day tanks. And all of that can be controlled from screens here in the engine room. But there's always manual backup as well. In case anything goes wrong with power, you have manual backup of all the systems as well. And if we head aft in the engine room through this bulkhead, you get to the toy chest slash Beach Club. So here we are inside the Beach Club slash tender garage. Now what you have to picture is at sea, these two side panels fold down, the back hatch swings up and then a panel slides out at water level from which a ladder comes out and then you can connect them all with a couple of panels. So you can walk all the way around the outside of the Beach Club in a big loop. It's all finished in teak, and of course, this is also where the tender lives. You can see it's suspended here on a little crane, so that will slide out this way, and then you can lower it into the water. And the same thing with the jet ski here. You can roll that over because it's on chocks with wheels, put it underneath the crane, and you can launch it that way as well. Thank you so much for watching our tour of the magnificent Pershing 140. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our future uploads. I'll see you on the next one.